is the Glass Cannon Network. Good evening, everybody. It's Thursday, April 6th, 8 p.m. Eastern. Do you know where your children are? <laughs> yep. Do you, do you know oh my where God. they are? Well, I actually know. I left, no. I left them at the park. No. Oh, my God. I have to go. I actually, I never have any idea where any of my children are. <laughs> <laughs> it could be anywhere. They could be they in could college. Be anywhere on earth. I don't know how old they are. <laughs> They could be in college. <laughs> I mean, I they have to be. Well. I hope they think of me often. <laughs> they can't be any older than the time than the earliest entry to the first sperm bank you ever went to, right? Uh, I guess they couldn't be older than thirty-five. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! That means you could be a grandfather. I could. So I hope <laughs> my grandchildren, I hope they're doing okay. I hope, man, wherever I hope they, they can, wherever I hope they they may can be. pay for college, wherever they are. <laughs> Maybe so one of us is expensive. your uh, child. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. That just blew my mind. Are always <laughs> finishing each other's sentences. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is a weird thing. Like, uh, regardless of how safe you were over the years, there's always a chance that someday your doorbell's going to ring and you're going to no. have to be confronted with something crazy. <laughs> well, sure, but I thought you were going to say a like, child. I feel like the – for example, I would know if I had one. I yeah, think you I would probably know. You would probably know. I, yes. know. You I think I know. would know. Come to think of it, I was like, that could really ha – wait, no, I would no. know. I would know. What if you donated an egg, though? I would say, if you've seen the I later guess. seasons That's of Alan Field. That's was your egg. Yeah. Oh, which I sure have. So. That's like a really <laughs> intense and arduous process. They pay you a lot of money, but it's I like, and, and, uh, like lucrative. Months, it's like months long. It's yeah. months long of like sticking a needle in your leg or something. Who's I don't you, know. You need an egg guy? I could do, do it in a, a day. Do you <laughs> have an egg guy? <laughs> <laughs> I got an egg guy. Get I, got an egg, there. I know a great egg guy. A half. Price of eggs these days? You got I an know. egg guy? Let me know. Right on the side of the river. Great egg guy. Am I right? Um, <laughs> I have a, a, a relative in my family who uh, he is, I'd say late late sixties, maybe even early seventies. Uh, let's say early seventies, and right around uh, sometime in his mid to late sixties, he got the email uh, <sighs> with the advent of uh, you know twenty uh, three and Me and all these DNA sites. He got the email that says uh, our uh, this DNA test, it looks like bibbidi bobbidi boo And uh, sure enough, it, it was his daughter. And she was like 50-something uh, and had a whole life, had a family with children. And you know, now they're, I think she's like part of the family. I mean, once that happens, kind of like, all right, I guess we're adding an, an extra stop at Christmas. I don't know what the hell happened. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to know something crazy? Yep. Mm -hmm. My dad was adopted. And he looked when he was, you know, like in his 20s, looked for his parents. But back then there was no digital records and the files were just gone. Like there was no way to find them. The files probably burned down, you know, like in some fire or something, oh, like just gone. It's like so Philomena. He was, he was just like, he was like, uh, Was he you know, raised in a nunnery? No. Right, continue. But he was just like, I guess I won't know, you know, like whatever. And with the, you know, advent of genetic availability to the mass, I was like, you know, we should do 23andMe. Like, we should just do it for fun, at least to find out our ancestry, because we didn't know what we were. Mm -hmm. And my dad was like, I don't really give a shit, but okay. Like, he just did it. He was like, all right. And I did it. Mm -hmm. And probably like a year or two later, I shit you not. <laughs> Look at Skid's face. We found- I'm horrified <laughs> at where this is going. <laughs> we, I know, me too. No, no, <laughs> it's a happy ending. We found his biological mother, who same deal, like had matched with us on 23andMe. It was like, we think this is your grandmother. And I was like, no shit. So he messaged her and he was like, hey, totally understand if this makes you extremely uncomfortable. This is weird. But if you'd like to talk, you know, I'd love to meet you. And it 
just worked out. It wasn't that weird. They like got together, they met, and now they're like in each other's lives and they're friends and I've met her and she's, you know, she's like a sweet old lady. She's like your 70 grandma? something. She's yeah, your my grandma. grandma. My grandma. Wow. And she's super that is nice. Wild. And it was wild. Like it was wild. But like you Where said, Where was it's like, she? Was she in New York? Uh-uh. Even better. She was in Mexico. She wow. was running wow. from the law? <laughs> yup. No. <laughs> she, she was uh, a bank robber? <laughs> on the lam? She <laughs> Did she leave your dad outside of an IHOP and run across the border? <laughs> <laughs> But uh, it, it was super cool. But it's crazy because like you said, like this woman has had her entire life, you know, like she has lived her life. My dad has lived his life. Like there's only so much reconciliation you can do, but it's kind of nice and wonderful that there's like the opportunity in the world nowadays to meet your biological mom. That's or so mind whoever. blowing though. Like, yeah. was, w did she give him up for adoption? Like, yeah. or was it a, okay. Yeah, she like gave him up. She was in a situation, was she was super he, young. Was he like- Hey, what was the deal with that? Like, did I he mean, ask the question or did he just avoid that conversation? I think they had like a private conversation about it. I think there were tears involved and sure. there was a lot. I mean, who knows what a person is going through when you're yeah, 70. It's like, and I don't even know if he would bring it up. It's so, yeah. you know. But uh, but no, like we're friends on Facebook, me and her. And every so often, you know, we're like, Merry Christmas. You know, wow. how you doing? Happy Thanksgiving. Grandma. My grandma. <laughs> Thanks for the but check. Yeah, that is, is so amazing. That's cool. Wild that it can just happen. You just it match is weird. And... All of a sudden to get a grandma, like at, right. you know, that's crazy. Yeah, kind of the grandma. worst time though. I don't get like the gifts and all the cool stuff grandparents do. I kind of missed out on that, but that's okay. Yeah, that's okay. Does she like Legacy of the Ancients? Yeah, that's a good question. All yeah. right, I will have to have her listen to this one episode where I talk about her, and I'm sure she would go, "That's so nice." <laughs> Has she they left an iTunes review? They might not get it in Mexico, though. They might not. <laughs> they might not. <laughs> <laughs> we have two downloads in Mexico every week. <laughs> <laughs> it's her trying two times because she doesn't know how to work the internet. How does this work? <laughs> the novelist uh, Ian McEwan had an older brother that he didn't know about. His parents, so was, I think it was like a wartime situation. And his parents, it's it, like same parents, but they had given up his older brother for adoption because they couldn't afford a child when it happened. And then years later, we're in more a more financially stable position. That had him, and they never told him. And so he like met him when he they were both like middle aged. <laughs> At that point, it's like, oh, I've got another brother. I'm fifty three. Right. <laughs> <That's so weird. laughs> All right. So check this out. I, I there's someone in my family uh, who is like ninety something years old, uh, and uh, his wife. And his, his wife's daughter, uh, the wife's daughter basically got way into 23andMe or Ancestry, one of them. So started getting tests for everybody and got tests for her father. And it comes, <laughs> they find out that, and she, she's reading the test. She's not giving him to her father to read. He's 90 something. She wants to read it and tell it back to him. But they find out through multiple tests now, because the first one was like, hmm, wait a minute, got another one like, Wait a second. And then the third one to confirm that the man that he thinks has been his father his entire life, who he looked up to and just adored, wasn't his biological father. The mom wow. had had other like relationships and just settled with a different man and never told him that that wasn't his father. And wow. they don't want to tell him because yeah. he's 90 something and like, it would just, they're afraid it would shatter his world. Um, yeah. As it would, as it absolutely would. But isn't that crazy? Like they know that the man that he thought his entire life was his father isn't his father. And they they, they just yeah. don't want to tell him. It is he, his father though. I like, sure, 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 sure. Troy, come on. Stop being so cold. You know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> What's crazy too is these are all Simpsons episodes. Like yeah. each one of these things has happened on the Simpsons. <laughs> Simpsons <laughs> are... <laughs> Homer's brother Herb, the Detroit auto magnate, uh, when when Mona Simpson comes into their life, same thing. They even have the same conversation about missing, not getting all the grandparent presents and stuff. They have that same conversation. Simpsons did it. Simpsons did it. It's a transcendent show. Um, it's very possible that when we finish tonight's episode, it will be uh, an exact replication of a season five Simpsons episode because <laughs> they've done everything. It also, I feel like the the chances are higher with Skid on the show of that happening because he could steer into try it. Try to steer yeah. in that direction for sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, was, I was watching today. It's like the episode where they had the the Ben the talk show where it's like they have the bear like interviewing people in the audience. 
It's like the it's like a Sally Jeff, Jesse Raphael, but it's like a wild bear with a <laughs> microphone on its, on its head. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. crazy. Uh, you know what's crazy? Uh, in two weeks, there will be no Glass Cannon Live here on Twitch because we will be in Boulder, Colorado. Amazing! Yes. Uh, we'll be in Boulder, Colorado on 420. So stay home and get high because we'll be getting ready for a show the next night, Friday, April 21st at E-Town Hall. Now, at the time of this recording, VIP is completely sold out and there are only 24 tickets left. I guarantee by the time this episode airs, it could be sold out. There may not be tickets left. So I'm sorry to get your hopes up. Hold on, you hold on, had hold on. your chance. I really want to nail you down on this one, Troy. You're guaranteeing it could be sold out. I'm guaranteeing <laughs> that is a very good chance. I can't believe. We, it's we might have out. to edit this. Nope. You leave it in. <laughs> leave it in. Liability so bold. reasons. I so mean. bold. I want everyone listening to go check right now and just blast the comments. Like, no, it's not. <laughs> No, it's not. There's 23 Why? tickets left now. No, they need to blast the comments. Couldn't be. <laughs> <laughs> Could, couldn't possibly be sold out. Couldn't be. Well, you know what may not be sold out is the other four shows that we announced. Two in May yes. and two in June. Thursday, May 25th, we are coming back to St. Paul, back to Amsterdam Bar and Hall. And then two days later, we're, later, we're hopping a plane to Asheville, North Carolina at the Gray Eagle on Saturday, May 27th. Flash forward a month thursday june 29th we're back in hollywood baby los angeles sunny california back at the terragram ballroom where we were last year and then two days later we're flying up to the pacific northwest to be in seattle at the triple door on saturday july 1st the 2023 tour is on it's back come see us come see yeah. us yeah 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 we're gonna have yes. so much fun I'm very excited. Uh, there's nothing better than being on tour. It, uh, I just love being out there. I love traveling. I love hanging with you guys in person. Yeah, I in love, person is uh, way better. Way I love better. backstage. And I'm super excited to return to St. Paul, and I'm super excited to go to Asheville for the first time ever. I've always Me heard too, great yeah. things about Asheville. I've never so. been either. I'm yeah. so excited for Asheville. Never been. I I'm very Asheville. excited to return to, to St. Paul. Oh, sorry, it's good. No, uh, Asheville's awesome. I really hope the tourists are in town, as I as I <laughs> as I said the other day, the Asheville tourists. Uh, but sorry, Matthew, go go ahead. No, no, I was just going to say I've been very excited to go back to St. Paul because I'm in need of an E string for my guitar, and that uh, green room had a vending machine of uh, <laughs> that's of guitar true. strings. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> a vending machine that. of guitar strings. Oh, that's like gonna picks be fun. And, you know, whatever you need. <laughs> Travel to these shows. I mean, the Asheville show where it's. A, I, I say it on uh, on Cannon Fodder a couple of weeks ago. Um, we, we really need you to travel to these shows in these new cities because it allows us to try out new locations. You want us to come to Phoenix and uh, Boise and Kansas City, then we need you to show up in Asheville. Uh, it's the only south, uh, show in the South we're doing this year. So come on, Florida. Come on up. Um, you're allowed. And uh, Atlanta, we're not coming to Dragon Con, so come see us in Asheville. It's good. I'm so excited. In LA, we're going to be out there for like a week. It's going to be a blast. Um, but speaking of blasts, a fireball is about to explode in your face. But first, <laughs> how did we get here? Last week, last episode, you had finally mopped the floor with those three denizens of Lang that were standing in the room where you first met the Yellow King. You're here. To find the Yellow King, you traveled back to the abandoned caravanserai to meet with the Yellow King because once you got all the gifts, he was going to take you to the Mad Poet. You, the caravanserai is a little weird. It's dark out. There's new people there. It looks like people have been searching the place, turned it upside down. It's denizens of Lang. You meet some boogeyman named Mr. Wanderlust who explains to you he's just a consultant working with a denizen of Lang named Weirali who has come here with a bunch of her cohorts to do something, to take the Yellow King. Well, after you go outside, you see this giant flying dinosaur with a howdah on its back uh, who explains to you that Weirali left with a man matching the description of the Yellow King on her brother, another Shantak, and they flew to the moon! <laughs> this I book is getting a little out of hand. <laughs> <laughs> so you hop in the howda after convincing this dumb dinosaur that you're friends? Hey, Sybil is really sweet. 
She is sweet. She's a simple dinosaur. Dumb for trusting us, but yes, sweet. (laughs) Well, she's fly. She flew you to the moon, and you get to the moon. Fly me to the moon. Fly me me to the moon. moon. You you get to the moon and uh, you land on this like paddock, and she seems concerned. Uh, and you realize it's because she expected her brother to be here and he's gone. So now she's worried that they left without her and she needs to go back, thereby stranding you on the moon. And you're like, well, we'll just die and wake up. Yeah, you'll die and wake up and then you know your way back to the caravanserai. How do you know you can get to the moon? And then you got to find another Shantuck that just happens to be in the area to fly you to the moon. It's a very dangerous situation. You're now kind of on the moon. You need her to fly you back to Caravanserai. Um, It's complicated, so you convince her to stay. And you see this little lake, and you walk in the direction of a building to the south of the lake. And there's a guardhouse. Looks like the only way in. On the other side of the guardhouse is a portcullis that's down. And you hear a voice that's like, Get out of here! What are you doing? Come on! And, uh... It's a uh, it's a ghoul that's in there. I don't know if I mentioned that, um, but I'm mentioning it now because you're about yeah, to see it. You didn't mention that. No, it I is don't. a it is a ghoul uh, that's peeking its head out of this tiny little hole uh, that doesn't look like there's any door leading into the building. And Ethel stands up and uh, demoralizes uh, the ghoul um, when he tells you you got to get out of here, you got to leave. And he's like, all right, come around. I'll open the gate. And you come around, and he unleashes a fireball. And I'm going to have this happen pre-initiative. Everybody roll a reflex save as I drop this. Uh, Okay. God damn it. Fire! Reflex. We were laughing before we started recording about how stupid we were. We were just like, oh, thank you for letting us in. Yeah, thank you. We just walked (laughs) right into the trap. Walk right back, walk right into that fireball. You can see it on the map here. It has, hey, uh, why'd you put it on me? Because that's where it, uh, <laughs> that's that's where it, it started. It started on you. Um, so everybody give me a, a sweet little reflex save here. Um, and then tell me what you got starting with Matthew. 25. 25. Pretty good as he looks for the DC. <laughs> 25 I thought it was a, a certain fail 25 it's okay good. it's pretty good um and Suki 17 not not good at all I rolled uh, a natural 3 Ooh. okay uh spoiler alert not good uh Atticus I did not roll a reflex save I would like you to I object <laughs> um no I I said in our last episode, they all get mixed together. I think it was our last episode. Here we go. That I got new spells when I leveled up. And I mentioned one of them, Cone of Cold, Mm -hmm. and said I did not mention the other because it was new, something that we hadn't seen before, and I wanted to save it. Yeah. Well, it's been saved, and I'm going to use it now. Ooh, is it an immediate spell? It is a reaction Mm -hmm. spell. From the That's illusion school called Shadow Siphon. Ooh. I cast it. So as soon as this Sice begins to cast a fireball, Atticus is on top of this with what he's been studying and reading and writing in his creepy, like, grimoire. And he casts this spell immediately. And essentially what it does is as the fireball comes at us, this it starts to change from just an orange ball into a half purple dark shadow of a fireball. And he basically forces and changes the material of the fireball to become an illusion and not real. (laughs) That's really cool. What? It's extremely cool. However, it doesn't just automatically happen. Joe's got a roll. Oh no. And there's two pieces of really bad news. The first one is Joe has to roll. The second one is after the roll, it's going to be a counteract situation, which means none of us will understand it and we will 100% get the rule wrong. But here we go. I, I really thought I had counteract down, but every time it it, every it time. manages to confuse me when I'm live on air. Here we go. Okay. Well, what's the spell called? Let us know the name of the spell. The spell Shadow is called Siphon. Shadow Siphon. Shadow Siphon. S-I-P-H-O-N. I know Shadow it's Siphon. Siphon. It's a very common word. 
Yes. <laughs> um, and so it, 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 I ba- it basically, if I get a good roll, it works uh, now because it, it is it is really powerful in terms of the counteract and the counteract. Sorry, how do you spell shadow? <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> I was just wait. I was just. I was seeing you in my mind typing S I F O N because you went to actor school. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I almost won a spelling bee. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was the word you went out on? Out of Satchel. 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 Like Satchel? Page? I, yep. I didn't know How what did it you was. Spell it? When? Um, I think I spelled it S A C A G L. Yeah. I oh, forgot wow. the T. To this tricky. day, I don't know how to spell it. Maybe I spelt it S-A-T, and it doesn't have a T. My word and was the Colonel C. Girl got it. Colonel yeah. C is good? Colonel C was my, my word. Colonel I, the C? The first time I heard that word was in Downton Abbey. Satchel oh. or Colonel C? Colonel C. Yeah. Is that the is that popcorn related? What is this Colonel C? <laughs> All right. Okay. I'm going to <laughs> basically I'm rolling right I was, now. I was trying to buy time for Joe to reread Counteract. I'm reading Counteract <laughs> long right roll. now. It is, Joey. it is. But first let's just do the roll. This is gonna be against the spells DC. So you have the spells DC. So here what? we go. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Did anyone wonder for one second? Alright, I'm spending a hero point. I have. I, was it so a natural? Was it, it was a natural, a natural one. Oh oh my so excited God. about this new spell. <laughs> so excited to be able to help my friends. <sighs> so I mean, the game just takes and it takes and it takes. It never gives anything. I mean, from who it takes, it gives. To <laughs> give it. To That's us. true. It gave to Troy. It took from me. <laughs> I feel like on, I just got a new Grandma. natural one. <laughs> All right, hero point. Now was, I'm gonna was, die wait, in this, in this episode. That was a funny joke that Troy just said. It was a funny joke. <laughs> oh, I missed it. I said, I, I feel like I just got a new grandma. <laughs> 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 that was good. Uh, all right, rolling again. Come on, come on, O'Brien. Okay, all right. Uh, <laughs> that is a 27 against the spells DC. All right, so now let's just talk this through. I'm not telling you if you passed or failed, but. What happens if you fail? If I, if I fail, I, I am successful if the counteract level is lower than your effects counteract level, which it would be. Because the counteract level is essentially, unless I'm getting this wrong, is going to be the level of the spell. So that's the, the counteract level. If the, if the effect is a spell, its level is the counteract level. So okay. So even if you even if you were to fail, that this check that twenty seven say that twenty seven was a failure, you still could counteract it. I still successfully counteract it because fireball is a lower level spell than this spell. I would have what to critically fail. What if it's a heightened fail. fireball? Well, then that's what it, that's what we have to see. If it's heightened fireball, uh, so this Is specific level spell, spell, what's that? This is a fifth level spell. The this is a fifth siphon? level spell, but it has an added thing. Shadow Siphon's counteract level is too higher for this attempt. So it's a seven is the counteract level. Wow. Yeah. Wait, so yours is effectively a seven? Mine is effectively a seven, the way I read it. it the last line of the spell says, treat Shadow Siphon's counteract level as too higher for this attempt. Oh, treat Shadow X... Wow, okay, as two higher, so that becomes seven. And you did fail on the okay. 27, but you counteract the target if its counteract level is lower than your effects counteract level, which because of that particular spell, it is. Yes, okay. Awesome. So it just means it it makes half the fireball into shadow fireball, as if it's from the shadow plane, and it does not exist or harm us on this plane. So everyone takes half damage. Ah. One takes half damage, or half so again, depending on the result of your save. Yeah, half of whatever they would have taken. That okay. is massive. All right. Yeah. Um, now, do you still roll the reflex save or this? Absolutely, you... absolutely. I just okay. wanted to get that done first. Yeah. So, and then reflex save uh, is, I'm sure, a failure. That is a 26. Yeah. So that's a fail. Okay. And then, Kate, what did you roll? I had a natural 15 for a 32. Oh, oh reflex wow. is my best. What about Aldo skin? Uh, I, like Sydney, got a natural three and I got a 19. 
Okay, so Skid and Atticus. It's not Skid, not you, Skid. Uh, Aldo, <laughs> Atticus. <laughs> oh no! Oh no, I'm the fire! <laughs> Aldo, Atticus, and Ethel would have taken 40 points of damage, but instead Whoa. you take 20. Oh man. Suki would have taken 80 points of damage. Oh my god. I do need to retcon if this makes any difference on the critical fail. I had my old character sheet open. It was a 18, not a 17. Still a critical fail. Okay, just uh, That's okay. Just uh, but now you're only going to take f- well, only 40 points of damage. But that, that would have been. And there's the hero point thing. 80. Now it's too late. Okay. Um, and then, Kate, you take, uh, you would have taken 20. You take 10 because uh, okay. you were the only success. Uh, very, very. Caster v. Caster. I just that love is it. so cool. Spell. Roll for initiative. Okay. All right, ah, let's dance. Yeah. He's got to be a little intimidated now. That was, that was pretty awesome. Yeah, that was uh, when I was reading through spells. There's, there's obviously a, a, a huge amount of amazing fifth level spells, but like for it to be illusion school, a reaction spell of which I really have none. You know, I was like, I gotta take this. I gotta take this, and for it to happen so quickly, it's awesome. Um. Yeah, and I, I, I think we did it well. Uh, I did it correctly. I think so too. It's I all based so on if you got the only thing I would question is like what you rolled for your check. As long as you got your roll right, I think everything else we did correctly. Yeah, I, I'm not sure 100 percent what to roll, but I rolled my spell attack roll, which I feel like is the probably the number that I roll. With. When attempting a counteract check, add the relevant skill modifier or other appropriate modifier to your check against the target's DC. I rolled uh, my spell, spell attack. Use the cast. Yeah, so, yeah, I think you're uh, for spells. The counter check modifier is your spell casting ability modifier plus your spell casting proficiency bonus, plus yeah. any bonuses and penalties that have specifically apply to counter act checks. I think you might have been right. Uh, certainly, even if you were off, I don't think you would have critically failed. Um, right, because you were off by one on the DC with a twenty-seven. Oh. <laughs> well, if I'm successful, it doesn't change anything. Right. Uh, it just, it, it, yeah. So if Even I'm successful. Even critical success, it doesn't help you in this instance. It right, just, exactly. So yeah. count, yeah, like this is what I realized about counteract is like, it's not that difficult if you're going against something that's kind of equal to you or you're stronger than. Like it's not that difficult to counteract. It's when you're trying to counteract something a higher level than you is is really difficult. It's quite cool. Uh, let's talk initiative. What'd you get there, Atticus? Uh, I got a 27. 20. Sorry, sorry, sorry. That's not right. Uh, I got a 23. 23. I did my reflex save as my initiative. <laughs> You're so stupid. I wish it was. Uh, Suki, what you get? Uh, I got a 34. 34? But oh. uh, I need to do this because if I don't do it now, I'm going to get it wrong for this entire campaign while I have it. <laughs> Pepsi is on the field. So Pepsi needs to also make a reflex save. Oh, no. Oh, Pepsi. Oh. Pepsi. Pepsi does. With me. Pepsi so. Come on, critically succeed. Critical success. That's uh, that's a 27. Snake got good reflexes. Uh, that would be 40 points of damage. Instead, it's 20. I mean, does Pepsi have 20 hit points? Yeah, Pepsi's pretty healthy. That's a, I mean, that's not good. I feel bad for my snake, but Pepsi's okay. <laughs> this is the same snake that you tried to shoot out of a bone out. Exactly. I think that this snake has been really <laughs> misimagined for all of us. <laughs> It really all started with the shooting it on an arrow thing. I it need really... to do a PR campaign for Pepsi. I need new Pepsi. Crystal Pepsi <laughs> is Pepsi's <laughs> new name. Giant a snake Pepsi. that shrugs off 20 points of damage. Could have been fired from a crossbow. Uh, all right, what'd you get, Ethel? <laughs> 24. 24. Uh, Eris. I got a 26. 26 for Eris. And my main man skid, what'd Aldo, Aldo get? Uh, I got a 30. 30. All right. Well, we are in it, and I am going to do the following. So, um, if you uh, look at the map here, uh, I have not revealed the guardhouse because uh, it won't really help you. Uh, uh, can I disagree? Cool. <laughs> and also, <laughs> respectfully, respectfully disagree. Respectfully. Yes, yeah, so might we be the judge of that? <laughs> Is this up for discussion? The difficult thing is reveal no longer works. <laughs> so <laughs> what? just use your imagination. Uh, even Polygon reveal doesn't uh, work. Uh, Have you tried um, asking? 
I, Please reveal. Have you tried restarting your computer? I can't do that. <laughs> uh, we're live. But anyways, it is... Uh, there doesn't seem to be any sort of door there. If I can, uh, I'm, I'm resetting the uh, VTT here. If, if, if it comes up, I'll try to reveal it. If it doesn't, uh, it's going to be a short episode tonight. Um, but there doesn't seem to be any discernible way, uh, like a door. Um, there are small little windows, um, but uh, the, the the person that attacked you, that ghoul, because you can now see it, this green-faced monster, doesn't look like their typical ghoul. looks a lot like uh, ghouls that you faced uh, or talked to in the necropolis. Uh, if you remember, um, is standing there, <laughs> and it is uh, Suki's turn. Wait, so there's no windows, but we can see the ghoul? Yeah, well, no, I'm sorry. There are windows. There's no door, and so you see him kind of peeking around, and that's where the fireball came out of, and he appears to be alone in this uh, small, what, 10 by 5 foot gatehouse. Okay, and then question, remind me, where, where we were before we walked over to this door to get ambushed, were we talking to him through a door? Uh, yeah, no, you were, he was talking through a window. He's like, get out of here. You're not supposed to be here. Go away. And then, all right, I'll open the portcullis. So you guys came around, and right to the west here is a portcullis that is down. Um, but he uh, tricked you. Okay. Tricked us. Um, Tricks you. Hmm. So he has a little tricksy situation here. Yeah, I don't really know what to do. I'm just going to, as like a reflexive action, uh, not like a re- like not a reaction, but just in story terms, Suki just cast shield on herself as if she meant to do it before the fireball hit, but kind of missed a little bit, and now shield is up. Um, so she cast shield, and that I yeah, I'm just gonna. That's what I'm gonna do. I don't know what to do. Okay, uh, yeah, no, you can uh, you can do that. So you're gonna cast shield, get yourself a little boost, and uh, kind of wait this one out. Um, it is then Aldo's turn. Aldo is gonna do something I don't think he's done before. Whoa! He has a new uh, sort of formula that he's been working on, uh, distilled with the perhaps the urine of Werner Hedgehog. Gross. Very special Lovely. concoction. Yeah. Oh, gross. And he pulls it out of his bandolier, guzzles it. It is a quicksilver mutagen. Oh, will, nice. Yes, it will give him a bonus five feet to his foot speed, a plus one uh, bonus to his dex checks, including uh, ranged attacks. And he will take some damage. So he actually, like, I think his bones actually lengthen to, like, you can hear a cracking sound as his joints kind of rearrange themselves and he gets more angular and lanky if that were possible and it is incredibly painful uh, he takes uh, 24 points of damage I think oh, oh wow um, oh my gosh but, uh, but it gets a little a tiny bonus so there we go that's uh, <laughs> probably probably stupid but there there we are never Quick accomplish self. anything without doing something stupid <laughs> That's what they say. So uh, that's okay. one action. Uh, and then um, for his second two actions, he's going to try to find a door. All right, so you walk over. Do uh, you want to walk over to the gatehouse, or you want to just kind of do a perception check from where you're standing? Uh, I'll, I'll I'll do a perception check where I'm standing. Okay, second action, perception check. Uh, 22. All right, 22. Um it seems like it would be possible to climb in and out of the window. Um, Especially but, now, for me. Yeah, you could get it, you could get in and out, um, and and it would it, it it's probably like slow you down as you're going in. You know, think greater difficult terrain. Uh, it would probably cost you an extra ten feet of movement to cross over into the gatehouse. Um, but then you would be uh, also in there with him. You don't really know what else is in there, but it does seem possible to get in there. Okay. So you got one right. action left. His final action, he yells out, Hey, you can crawl in through the window. <laughs> you can crawl in through the window. So he yells that he does not go in. Uh, it is the creature's turn, and that's going to happen right after this quick break.
we're back, and I'm going to reveal two things to you. The first thing I'm going to reveal is the ghoul that I was talking about. Oh! oh. That's what he looks like now. That oh. you, He's oh. actually in there. He's not standing on the roof with a fiddle having fun. He's... <laughs> <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Uh, he's uh, he's in there, and uh, the other thing I'm going to reveal to you <laughs> is the uh, second fireball he just fucking dropped on oh, you. Oh no! <laughs> Come on! <laughs> Give me another reflex save, unless you have another siphon. Uh, you know what? F you. I'll do it again. You'll do wow. it. Wow! <laughs> again. I'm gonna do it again. I mean, if Spell you have it, if you have this, this is ridiculous. But I'm gonna do it again. Okay. Uh, I am going to level. use. I'm going to use. Uh, it's just too much damage. I mean, yeah. if somebody critically fails, I mean, you're done. If Don't I worry, critically fail, I would be. I would be unconscious. I would be I dying. have my shield up. Don't and, worry. And yeah, if your you critically shield is fail, useless here. Don't forget, if you critically fail, you go straight to dying too. Right. Exactly. I, ah. I can't afford that right now. Um. Yes, I am going to, once again, he's going to draw from the powers within his Eldritch Amulet, his bonded item. It opens up and it begins to bring out this like purplish mist that is going to change the fireball into not real. Don't believe it! He screams at everyone. <laughs> it's only an illusion! <laughs> and so, yeah, maybe maybe with your minds you can get rid of this. Here we go. Going for that counteract, John. Natty 18. Rush. City. Boom. Crush. Uh, so, but city. we need we need an actual total. We need uh, like an actual total. Give me an actual total, but I think uh, you would have to critically fail here for it to not counteract it. Uh, because right, of, so it doesn't actually. Yeah, you're right. You don't need an actual because total. of that particular spell uh, it, where it counts as two levels higher. Uh, you already know that you can beat it. So, uh, uh, yeah, be, I know that is because of the last one. I know it's not a critical success. It is just a success, but I I counteract it. Yeah, and even a critical success wouldn't make a difference. Right. Um, so so you counteract damage. it, half damage. Uh, let's see if it'll be half a minute. Everybody give me a reflex save. Oh, jeez. And as you can see, he is conveniently out of the range, and that's why it was on Eris, because he wanted to be out of the range of his own bomb. Terrible Whatever. roll on the reflex save. Terrible. Uh, let's start with you then, Atticus. 23. 23, okay, that is a fail. Uh, Eris? Pass, got a natural 19 this time. Nice. Was it a critical success? Uh, Are we not? Want to do math. 36. 36, no. Pretty damn close. Uh, Suki. Uh, 32 for Suki. Okay. And 28 for Pepsi. Okay. And uh, Ethel? 28 for Ethel. 28 for Ethel. And Aldo? Uh, 27 for Aldo. 27 for Aldo. All right. So only Aldo and Atticus uh, failed, uh, but they weren't critical failures. So it would have been 40 damage again. I rolled another 40, uh, but instead it's going to be. What? Yeah. It's going to be. Uh, you rolled the exact same amount of I damage. I did. I'm using an online wow. roll because it's 10d6. Uh, I rolled a 40 twice. So uh, you both take 20 points of damage. Uh, Eris and uh, Suki and Pepsi and Ethel, you take 10 points of damage. So yeah, it would have, it would have I mean, been half. That's just half wild. Again. Not great. If, if I didn't uh, do that, I'd, I'd almost be down. Right? If, I think uh, I, I would be that. dead. If I you rolled a dead. 38 there, uh, Eris, you would have taken no damage. But uh, yeah, I mean, you had to do that. That was huge. Um, and uh, with his uh, final action, he is going to just slide to the south. Slide to the south. <laughs> and now, and I'm using six computers to run this, it is... <laughs> Eris's turn. What do you got up your sleeve there, Eris? Um, I didn't know what to do because I couldn't see this guy. And I guess I still can't. I mean, like, we can only see him through the window if we're, right. like, kind of <laughs> up at the window. Yeah. <laughs> do we have, like, line of sight for spells? Like, where is the window? Um, yeah, you know what? Let me see. I'm going to say you do. Um, but if it's an attack spell, he's going to get some cover there. Um, any sort of attack. Uh, if you were trying to do something to him, he's going to get a cover if it was a spell that had uh, an attack roll. Well, um, let's see. I want to cast Guidance on uh, Ethel. Oh. Okay. Do you have to touch him or no? Um, no, it's 30 feet range. Boom. You make it sound so uh, so distasteful for touching Ethel. <laughs> do you have to touch him? I don't have to touch him, but I can flavor touch him. That's all right. <laughs> Do you have reach? Um, all right, so I want to cast Guidance on Ethel, and okay. then 
Like, I don't... This is a really big, big, big prison. And this is just one guy, but he's doing fireballs. Dropping bombs. Ugh. So I'm gonna, I'm torn. Nothing's right, I'm torn. I was I'm just gonna, gonna say it. I know a lot of love. <laughs> it was this in my head. Is this hell hell. That's exactly what I was thinking. Thank you, Kate. Um, I'm out of faith. All right, this I'm gonna, I'm gonna do impending doom on him. Ooh. Dropping some doom on this, John? Dropping some impending doom. Okay. And what happens is you roll a will save. Okay, now let's just take a look at here. Is this the one that has the incapacitation trait? It has trait? incapacitation, so Okay, yeah, now, here's the thing. Is, is the incapacitation trait, it's been a while. Uh, la, 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 la. I just wanna see any creature more than twice the spell's level. Um, and it's a third level spell. Uh, so yes, this would be, uh, he's always gonna get one higher success in what he rolls. Um, but let's roll it. And this is a what kind of save? A will save. A will save. Let's see how his will is. Oh, not a great roll. That is going to be a 23. All right, so that's not a critical fail. It's a regular fail. Which becomes a but, success. Mm-hmm. All right, so um, I'm unaffected. Oh, yeah. So you're unaffected for this round. Second round, not you so will be affected. Okay. <laughs> Um, <laughs> you will be. You will be affected. Yeah, it was a pretty shit roll, so there was a, there was a chance there. Um, okay, and that was two actions, and the first one yep. was guidance. Great. Uh, moving right along, it is Ethel's turn. Okay, uh, Ethel is going to... Merman. Um, what was that? Merman. Yes. Ethel Merman is going Merman. to uh, run <laughs> and climb through the window. Okay, so uh, from pa passing from the outside to the inside, you have to add 10 feet to your movement. Uh, okay. We're gonna treat it as greater difficult terrain. But you're a boss, so you're gonna slide in there? Yeah, I was gonna see if I could roll acrobatics and do athletics, but it seems like the easiest thing is just to climb through the window. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, does that put me out right, I mean, no matter where I am, I'm next to him, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're in there and he's like, ah! Okay, that was action number one. Action number two is I'm gonna do a double like. slice, huh? Ah! You, you know who he kind of looks like? He looks less ghoulish and a little bit like, I mean, the face is ghoulish, but he looks Jack a little bit Benny? like our old friend. He does look like Jack Benny, but also our old friend Thune. Yeah. Oh. He looks a lot like Thune. Call me Thune. Okay. Uh, double slice, scimitar, warhammer, orange die is the scimitar. Come on, oh, just natural. I just want, guy. just once before we get out of the dreamlands, I want to. No natural 20. Cut okay. somebody's head off. Uh, that's you also have guidance. Great. Um, which I apply to a single roll or a single roll, single either roll. attack, perception, saving, or skill check. Okay, Save good. it for perception. I w <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, that is going to be a thirty for the warhammer okay. and a thirty-two for the scimitar. That is going to be two hits. Nice. Yeah, it better be. Beautiful. Let's two do the warhammer first. Wet hits. 15 points of damage from the Warhammer. Why are they wet? <laughs> and, ooh, uh, that'll be 18 points of damage from the Scimitar. Oh, blood. nice. First Max, blood has been drawn. Max damage. Nice. Max Dimaggio, all right. Is that the end of your turn? That is three actions, and it is the end of my turn. It's quite powerful. Uh, way to set up Joe O'Brien with Atticus's turn. Joe. You've been a, a hero here with this new spell of yours, staving off death of your allies. What will you do? I was thinking about it. I was like, I can't believe I've used two fifth level spells in this combat and haven't gone yet. Uh, <laughs> and, and it made me think something. Hmm. I don't like what you did, LaValle. Oh. Something's fishy here. Yeah? Well, what's with the surprise round? I was waiting for you to uh, bring that up. This isn't... This isn't your... First edition Pathfinder <laughs> game. Your grandfather's you forgetting Pathfinder. Where, this is your grandfather's Pathfinder? This isn't someone slightly older than you's Pathfinder. <laughs> uh, this isn't the guy who was in fifth grade when you were in first grade's Pathfinder. Yeah. <laughs> I looked your up. mystery uh, younger grandfather who lives in Florida. <laughs> I looked up uh, for the hell of it today. I was like, because I was thinking about this. I'm like, 
Man, I really feel like this is a situation where that fireball should come out. You like you walked right into it. But I was like, mm, you know what? The surprise round isn't really a thing like it is in 1E. There's no like uh, any of that shit. So I Googled for the hell of it um, to look this up. Um, I couldn't, Sorry, when I you just, say walked right into it, was it a trap on the ground? No, you walked right into the radius of his fireball that he was going to drop there. Um, so I looked up surprise attacks, and it's on page 499 of the core rule book, and it basically says uh, it should be used sparingly. And so I'm, I'm using it now. And, uh, I, I, I can't even tell you how much I don't like it. I think it is so <laughs> dirty. I know. He is know. an enemy that we knew was there and was yeah. aware of. Mm-hmm. It is... And that's a lot of damage to put out in it an is. AOE to an entire group of people. Yeah. I thought without a chance to have a, a go. I also thought also, it's like so, what a great way to like you see this huge building, and like immediately you're put on the ropes. It's just a I thought it was a cool way of being like shit's about to go down. At this or the first for have guy. four characters dying outside. Yeah, you thought right? it was cool. <laughs> The yeah. uh, point of order, <laughs> the surprise. <laughs> this is um, never going to work out in Troy's favor. The no. surprise uh, scenario that is being referred to on page 499 and 500 of the Corporal Board are surprise encounters. Like, you're sleeping and you're. You're and a, sleeping. <laughs> and an, uh, encounter, okay. an encounter incur, occurs during the rest time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Atticus is going to. I, I don't know what to do here. This is a real dumb situation, and I don't like my positioning and Ethel's all up in there. I can't even see the guy. So I'm just going to pull something from in that hut and just telekinetic projectile the dude. Um, yes. So he's just going to grab something off the wall, a loose bar, and smash it into this uh, ghoul's face and definitely roll a natural one. <laughs> uh, I can't tell sometimes if you're excited or if you I, I, I can't even... I can't even begin to control what's happening, the the fire that's boiling within me right now. So what did you try to do? Uh, sorry, what did I... Oh, I tried to cast telekinetic projectile. But instead you rolled a natural one. But instead Which means you I critically rolled, failed a spell. Yes, which means I critically failed a, a spell. A cantrip. A cantrip. No a cantrip that could kill all of you. This hey, one. Don't be mean. Everyone, shut up. I can't wait for this to be over. This one from Eric Clark in Seattle, Washington. Oh, we he know gave Eric his last Clark. name, everyone. Go get him. Phantom <laughs> from the Green. You see. You see oh. a terrifying. <laughs> this is Troy's favorite crossovers. You see a terrifying yeah. spectral Roger Cumstone Stop. suddenly appear. <laughs> well, you fr- don't read in it in front of you. Don't just change it. Don't read it aloud when it crosses genres like. You this. see an image of Sir Julie in front of you, laughing maniacally and glaring into your soul before she disappears again without explanation. The ghostly sight of the colossal psychopath immediately <laughs> strikes terror <laughs> into you. <laughs> that was what, that was her defining trait in life. Yep. <laughs> she was, uh, she was she a psycho. How she lived. Uh, here we go. And I have to make a will save, and I roll a natural five. I can't buy a decent die roll here. Well, I did roll that natty 18 on the counter, actually. Uh, all right. That is going to be it's a, a 21 against its AC, so that's a fail, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so not a failure fail. is frightened three. Oh, oh what the that's fuck? panic, right? Is that panic? <laughs> It doesn't say panic, Skid. Just be quiet. Just like I'm sorry. <laughs> Ian, mute his mic. Uh, I'm going to take the Frightened 3 condition, and then I'm going to run away. Uh, and this is mostly to not be in the range of the third fireball you're going to shoot. <laughs> you horrible, horrible friend. Uh, all right, so you are going to use your last action to run away in fear. I'm going to run away in fear. <laughs> Sir Julius, how haunting my dreams! Uh, and he runs away. All right. It you, is... you, you, you could be so lucky. <laughs> right? Uh, the top hey, of Sir ra- Julie, <laughs> get out of my dreams. <laughs> and into my car. And it's the top of car. round two, and it's Suki's turn. Uh, yeah, Suki, Su- Suki, 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 it everywhere. Suki, Suki, my shield is useless. Um, Suki is going to... And command Pepsi to crawl in through the window. Bye, Pepsi. Um, he came into the godhouse window. 
Uh, Pepsi goes in through the window, and Pepsi's gonna make two attacks on our ghoulish fiend, I should say. So Pepsi gets three actions, just to confirm, right? Uh, my action, one of my actions is to command Pepsi. Pepsi has a move action, and then can attack. Uh, yeah, he could attack twice. Okay, so he does get three actions. Yes. Yeah. Okay, I didn't know that. So with his jaws. I think you're lying. I'm not lying. <laughs> Listen, Mr. Surprise Round, I think we all it's get true. a little white lie this game. <laughs> Matthew was right for the right reasons. And, and I was Pepsi, right for the wrong reasons. Pepsi also gets a deck of opportunity, and that's my white lie for this game. All right, you. Uh, that's an 18. I'm assuming that misses. Uh, it critically misses. Okay. He bites himself. All right. That rattlesnake I saw on TikTok. And then... <laughs> I'm gonna attack again just because I can. Why not? Give and yourself a fourth action while you're at it. That's, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, to balance it out, we all get a fourth action next round. <laughs> what do you say? That's a 23. A 23 is also a miss. Okay. Well, get on, um, get, get Pepsi's in the guardhouse. Get in this guardhouse. <laughs> I know. It's so, it's just so ridiculous. I mean, to think what goes through your mind. The size, I'm looking at the, like, the uh, unrevealed prison. It looks like an enormous dungeon crawl. <laughs> like, apparently the boss was just out the, out, outside the front door. <laughs> he, just, he, just, he just greets everybody. He just greets everybody. <laughs> He's like the never Walmart see it coming. He's a good guard. <laughs> he is. Uh, he is a good for, guard. For Suki's second action. Um, <laughs> His body's all over the place outside. The previous <laughs> people that have rolled just up. Just blackened corpses <laughs> everywhere. We Did really you know he can known. cast seventh level fireball 85 <laughs> yeah. times a day? We really should have realized that after we crunched through all the scorched corpses through our feet. <laughs> well, the poor house is right over here. Crunch, 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 <laughs> crunch, crunch, crunch. crunch. <laughs> Difficult terrain over here. <laughs> I could definitely see why he got the surprise round. Um, you said that we can see you through the window for spell attacks. Yes, yeah, he'll right. just get cover. So then I am going to uh, cast Daze through the window as my second action, and you have to make a will save. Ooh, Daze. All right, a little will save. All right, that doesn't have an attack. Uh, right and up. I double checks it. I don't think that's going to work. Uh, I could be wrong, but I think that it can't work on... Oh, I'm sorry. Maybe I'm thinking of 1E. That it can't yes. work on... Oh. Yes. Lower, uh, higher level creatures. Yeah, I'm thinking of 1E. You're good, I think. Uh, enchantment, mental, non-lethal. Um, yep, it's just a basic will save. Yep. You're, all right, you're basic good. will save 33. Jesus. Well, yeah, that does it. You're, nothing happens. Nothing happens. Uh, oh, wait. Oh, no, it is. Uh, mine's a 23. Yeah, so nothing happens. It's a critical success. Sorry, this guy's a badass. For well, real, like I said the boss is out he front. He's the boss. Yeah. Speaking of badasses, it's Aldo's turn. Oh, hello. All right, do something cool. Suki says, "Do something awesome." My oh, turn was oh, wasted. Also, Skid, I'm just back here doing research the whole episode. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you took too much damage. I, I don't no, know no, if I I'm... did. I was going to say. I, okay, great. I, I should have taken 16 points, not whatever 20 something. I said. Yeah. I also this. Uh, this is this thing sucks uh, for me. This Quicksilver mutagen, it is basically worthless for me. I get the five feet of movement, but I really wanted the tiny boost to my two hit rolls, which is canceled out by my moderate bombs. They're both item bonuses, so like all like I took 16 points of damage, and uh, uh, and I less and and I get a, a debuff to my saves. <laughs> as well for five feet of movement. <laughs> I, was like, I really should not have done that. So, Sometimes you just have I, to drink it and see. Yeah. yeah, it's just like, oh, this is terrible. Um, <laughs> like so, Malord. Yeah, it is. It's like the Malord. It's like the Malord so, of alchemical uh, <laughs> elixirs. <laughs> mutagens. Or mutagens, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Nerd. <laughs> so Aldo is, if I can find the map here. Aldo is going to oh, he's right at the, so he's standing at the window right now? Yeah. Okay. Then, through the window, he is going to toss a dread ampule mm. at this guy. A dread ampule. I love that word. Which That's one? Both. That's good word. Ampule? Uh, or dread. Ampule? I, I like ampule, but I 
the, the two of them together is also just awesome. Dread uh, Ampule. That is a 35 to hit. That is a hit, even with the cover. Okay, nice. awesome. All right. Do you have something that avoids or ignores cover, or is that just the cover of your allies that ignores? Like, lesser cover? Oh, actually, I think my goggles do ignore lesser cover, I think. But this, okay, so that's for your allies and stuff. This is full regular cover. Right. Um, but it's still a hit. Okay. Um, okay, so that is uh, 10 mental damage. Ooh. And, the t- and he is frightened one. Frightened one. Just checking out awesome. his various immunities. Yeah, he does not look happy about that. Um, okay, frightened one. Okay. Um, and you got two more actions. <laughs> All right. Uh, and then I'm going to... I should have done this first. I'm so stupid. Stop berating yourself, Skid. <laughs> no, no, like Skid. A terrible, terrible day. Stop saying that about you. About yeah. my uh, friend. Okay. I'll say that about yeah, my don't friend. Don't talk about my friend that way. <laughs> I know. It's Matthew always says you. this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Matthew always says, don't talk about my friend that way. It's like, I hate to bring it to you, Matthew, but your friend's a moron. <laughs> uh, that is a that is a 30 to hit. 30 to hit is a hit. Okay. So the, I should have done this first, but this is the, the bottled lightning. Um, so that is 12 points of electricity damage. And he is flat-footed until my the begin, start of my next turn. Okay. Stealing Kate's and, thunder. And with my last, <laughs> <laughs> with my last action, I am going to provide. Uh, I'm going to give guidance to uh, Suki. Oh, thanks. Should have given it to Pepsi. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, now it is the ghoul's turn. I said this ghoul looks a little different. It looks similar to the ones that you, uh, some of you, met in the underground necropolis where some of you perished. One of you being Atticus. Um, now there are two enemies here facing the ghoul and he is frightened and he is acting out and he goes to bite Ethel. It's going to be a 31 to hit. Yeah, that'll hit. Well, as they say, and by they, I mean me, a couple things are gonna happen. First, we'll start with the damage. Oh God, that's going to be 16 points of piercing. And now I first need a fortitude save. <laughs> you don't need, you don't, you don't need anything. You're good just the way you are, Troy. <laughs> need, is, need is a strong word. Oh, that's not gonna be great. Uh, 24. 24, uh, everything seems to be just fine. You're definitely not a stage one carrier of Langul fever. Oh my god. Oh no. Oh, Langul. No. You're definitely not there. Now, give me another fortitude save. Oh man. One of my favorite Stephen King books, though. The Langul ears. <laughs> Bam. Ooh. Bam. 30. It's a good book. Why are you booing it? Skid's on fire. 30. Okay. You seem to be fine. Second attack with the Jaws. That one is going to be most likely a miss with a 24. That is a miss. Okay. And then uh, he is going to... uh, Let me see what his Johnny is here. I'm going to attempt to tumble through your square to the outside. Okay. Um, I believe that's going to be athletics against your... uh, reflex DC or acrobatics against your reflex DC. Um, so I'll roll it and you tell me what your reflex DC. That's going to be your reflex plus 10, but I'll roll it first. Oh, rocks. 39. You critically succeed. Oh, he just fucking back fri- flips through you uh, to the outside right next to Aldo. Um, oh, no. But That's where since I'm you're. Standing both equidistant to the wall, I'm gonna say you don't have cover from each other uh, in this instance. Um, okay. I guess you could, yeah, if you're right up next to him, well, we'll figure it out when we get there's there. There's a window, I, right? I could just yeah. beat there's him. There's a window, beat you could just beat him, yeah. If, I remember in one it was like, uh, whoever's closer to the barrier gets the cover, um, but where you're equidistant, I don't think you get it. Um, but now he's right next to Aldo and he's out there with Suki Harris and a uh, trail of rat piss leading to the north. <laughs> Um, and now it is Eris' turn. 
Okay, this guy is really, really annoying. Truly. It's only one of him, and he's really messing up our stuff right now. He's um, mashing your potatoes. Um, okay. Hmm. hmm. What do I want to waste on him? I feel like I don't want to waste anything on him, but then also, like, he's really, really tough. This guy's <laughs> a badass. He's hitting us like crazy. Um, so... Talk to me about see. impending doom for a second. Uh, he would have been flat-footed this round, but... Yeah, the thing is, you would have become flat-footed this round. You already are. So at least now it's extended past Aldo's turn, if that's right, what happens. Right, to your turn. Exactly. Um, so that's cool. And then you become frightened one next round. Right, so as that frightened cool. goes away at the end of Skid's turn, it will come back at the uh, beginning or end of your turn. Um, Let me see. I want to... Frick, I don't know what I want to do. I wanted to go up to him and cast Chill Touch. Everybody chill. But I also just saw him bite Ethel. Yeah, maybe And Ethel don't. didn't react well to that. Maybe don't get close. I'm fine. Come. I'm fine. All right. I know, I know. You're fine. Bring um, your filthy neck mouth my way. Listen, you little. Um, I do want to cast Guidance on... Aldo, maybe oh. help with whatever you did to yourself with your mutagen. Get a plus one next time. Um, and then I'm going to cast Grim Tendrils. Grim? What? Oh, dear. Oh, no. Tendrils? Suki's it in the way. Uh, you can cast through me. It's a 30-foot it line. <laughs> oh. Well. And Aldo, then, is also yes. in yeah. the yeah. way. I say do it. Well, shit. You know what? Casting Phantasmal Killer. Oh. 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 <laughs> oh. oh. At, at oh. me or at the bad okay. guy? At you, Suki. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, Suki, uh, what's your worst nightmare? At the bad guy. <laughs> Good question. All right. Uh, so you make a will save. Death, emotion, fear, illusion, mental. Let me just check my immunities. All right. Alrighty then. Uh, you said it's going to be a will save to begin with. Yeah. All right. Natural two. <gasps> oh, no! What does that mean? Amazing. Total. Um, it's probably not a critical failure because he has very high will, but it is very likely a failure at a uh, at a twenty one. It's not a critical fail. It's a regular old failure. Uh, so you take 8d6 mental damage. Oh, nice. Yep. And I'm going to use the online dice roller because I don't have 8d6. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, and I'll be frightened too. So now and I'll you're just frightened too. go up to frightened too. Um, that will uh, take over for Haldo's frightened. So that's 22 points of damage. Hey, nothing nice. wrong with that. Nice. You're frightened too. Nice. Nothing wrong with that at all. Okay. Um, very cool. And now it is Ethel's turn. Fantastic killer, man. It, it fucks in 2E. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, maybe. And maybe not. Actually, it's great because it does do a lot of just damage. But you're never going to kill anything of consequence. Until, sure. Until you do. Maybe early game, you know. Gatewalk, Gatewalkers, no, early no, 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 game. No, no. Before you get into it. That, the killing thing, I just realized for the first time, has the incapacitation trait. The so killing will, part? All, yeah, you will always uh. <laughs> only kill something that is lower level than you, basically. Yeah. Um, so that's Still why it's like- cool. It is cool, and you really shouldn't be able to just kill a boss with a phantasmal killer, but it does sound like it would be a cool night at the table if that happened. I wonder if there's but, some uh, sort of would, thing would, that If like, it happened like once, at, once every 50 encounters, it would be an awesome story. Yeah, yeah. I wonder if there's yeah. a metamagic feat that allows you to remove the incapacitation trait from a That would be amazing. Yeah. Just fucking make it Let's up. Let's house rule it. Yep, 12th level. 12th I'll level trade my, I'll trade my Quicksilver mutagen for it. That doesn't <laughs> seem like a fair trade. <laughs> Come hey, on, it eBay. could be really useful if you want to fail your save. Uh, whose turn is it? It's mine. Seven. It's your I'm turn, are you sure? I'm, no. Yes. Are you Ethel? I am Ethel. Then you may proceed. Thank you. Double slice. I was under the impression you were playing the character named Eris. Uh, that is a mistaken impression. Easy I'm mistake. Yes. <laughs> Easy was one we've all made. Yep. I'm okay. frightened. 
That is a 36 on the Warhammer and a 20 on the Scimitar. 36. What a range. Is a hit, and the 20 is a miss. Yes, I thought it, I thought it might be. Um, okay, uh, let me get some D8s here. That's going to be 20 points of damage from the Warhammer. 20 points of damage from the Warhammer, all right. I'm all out of right. focus. Okay, all right. The damage is coming uh, slowly, but <clears throat> slowly. Um, and you have one more action. Yeah, for a th- we've, we've talked about this in the past. If a, an attempt to grapple using athletics has the attack, uh, the attack trait, right? That you, you take yeah. the multiple attack penalty on it. You do. You know what? I'm going to try it anyway. Ethel is going to reach around. He's going to try to like reach around with the with one of his arms through, through a window, the window to just grab this guy and pin him against the side of the building. <laughs> I mean, it's <laughs> definitely cool. Um, but yeah, you will take the multiple attack penalty. It's uh, against my athletics DC, I believe. I'd have to look that up to be sure. Yeah. That's what I'm remembering off the top of my head. Let's see if my homework is paid off. Nope. The athletics check against my fortitude DC. Fortitude DC. Right. Okay, good. Which makes total sense. Well, it, you don't have to even know what it is because I rolled a natural three. So uh, that's going to be a definite fail. Um, I like it, though. You're thinking outside the box. You're thinking outside the guardhouse, as they say here in, on the moon. As they say. <laughs> um, that's his turn. That's his turn. Hell of a turn. Uh, it is... Hold on Attic. a second. Uh, what was your first attack, Matthew? It was a 31 or something. Uh, it was a... Was it really high? 36, I believe. I believe that should be a crit. Why? He's flat-footed. Because he's frightened three, he must be And flat-footed. Point. Well, frightened doesn't lower your AC. Yes, it does. Yeah, it lowers, lowers your checks all and DCs. Your AC is your a AC DC. Your AC is a DC. AC DC. He's been hey, thunderstruck. AC. Oh, I didn't know the AC was a DC. Yeah. <laughs> the AC is a DC. I'm so confused. Now, it doesn't that. say that anywhere in the book, but it is. Uh, no, it actually is. Okay. Um, in that case, was it a 36? Or was yes, it like it was, a... It was a natural 17, and I have plus 19 to my Warhammer. All right, so you said it was 20 points of damage? 40 yeah. points of damage, dude! Actually, 40 points of damage. You are also knocked prone. Oh, yes. oh, no. oh, that's right. Critical effect. <laughs> Welcome to critical effect town. Woo. There he is, prone. Um, that really nice. sucks. <laughs> would that, that would change my third action, because I certainly wouldn't try to grab him out the window if he was lying on the ground. Would you? <laughs> All right, I mean, what do you want to do instead? That's fine. You can't uh, just be happy with the crit I, fuck, now, huh, I fucked up. I mean... We literally, we, Joe literally gave me a note before about how I should always demoralize on my first, my first action. Um, but I was hoping to flens, so instead I will de- attempt to demoralize this, this fellow. Oh, so your flens is an action. You'll never demoralize. You'll always hope to hit with the double slice yeah. and then flens, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I'm going to try to demoralize him, and I'm going to uh, say, You lied to us. You liar. You... <laughs> You dirty liar! <laughs> what did you say did you to me? You already roll poorly, and you're you're acting it out appropriately. <laughs> Never has anyone spoken to me in such a way. Oh my 20, years as a god! It is a twenty-nine intimidation. You bite your tongue. Uh, fail. What? It's a fail. Twenty-nine. You don't know that. All of his DCs are lowered. They are lowered, but he's got. Well, you said he's, twenty-nine. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Oh, fuck. I just closed my document <laughs> with all my shit. I'm all thrown <laughs> off now. Uh, all right, wait. It's a 29. You said 29? Yes. That actually is a success. Yeah. Yes! yes! All right. So add another drop to his DCs. All right. So, yeah, what is... Uh, sorry, I'm all thrown off right now. It's just now. frightened. Minus. Right. One. It's uh, another fright. And uh, you stack another frightened on, right? He doesn't speak English. <laughs> he doesn't speak English. What were we communicating in? Yeah, what was he saying? Sorry, common, common. common. Those were the only words he knew in common. Oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. We really he got just, lucky. Hit the target, right? <laughs> he had memorized them phonetically. He just says that. It makes it worse that we fell up. for his surprise attack. I feel dumber and dumber by the minute. All right, so wait, he was frightened three. Uh, this doesn't stack. Does frightened stack? Or no, I, you, I think you just take the high, the highest condition, which is still Ethel's frightened. Oh, is it? I thought yeah. it just kept stacking. If it's from different sources, 
Yeah, I'm not sure about that. I think, I was just reading this the other day, um, but I think it's like when you get tagged with another condition that's the same condition that you already have, they don't stack, you still just take the highest one. But if the duration is longer, uh, you take the longer duration. Okay. Um, that's what I, so it was, uh, it was a waste. They don't stack. Wasted jump. Damn it. Well, oh, all right. So I fucked up the other thing, but I got this right. And surprise attack, I got completely right. Which is all that's really important. Um, <laughs> all that really oh, wait, matters. But, Troy, what you said is correct, though. So it's like, it's not like it replaces it. They're both there. So, like, Frightened One has a longer duration. So that will still be in. I don't think we're going to last that long in this. But yeah. So what you said is correct about duration. Thank you. I just like hearing that I'm correct. Um, well, you're welcome. P Pants, what do you want to do? Since he, I knew who you were talking to. Uh, <laughs> since he's already, <laughs> since he's already, was he frightened five now? Because uh, it stacks. His DC, his AC must be so much lower. So Atticus is going to fight through his existing fear of seeing his dead companion, and he will uh, cast another round of telekinetic projectile. Because if he can, his AC is lowered. He must be able to hit here. He's prone. He's frightened. Let's dance. Time for a natural 20. Double damage. Rocket. Natural two. <laughs> you best stop. Enjoy the rest of your evening. <laughs> Is that a critical failure? I'm just curious. Uh, it wasn't a one. So. It would be a 19. Uh, no, obviously with all these penalties. Yeah. Um, so uh, it's just a miss. And then... Um, with his last action, he will move uh, <laughs> uh, a little bit closer. Oh, that's amazing. I mean, I, I am ice, ice cold. <laughs> I mean, ice cold in multiple games. Skid could tell you, Matthew. Oh, yeah. It's oh, been, yeah. even for you, it's been extraordinary. Yeah, oh, wow. I mean, you did get I, that It makes important. me realize that like for like a year, I've been on a, on a, on a average streak. Yeah, which has been I know, amazing which for you. Is is a is a white hot streak. Yeah, but it's all coming back to me now. Yeah. Uh, I am then going to d reduce my frightened condition by one, and I don't care what you say. <laughs> okay, uh, reduce your frightened condition by one. That's fine. It is the top of round three, and it is Suki's turn. <laughs> she has to yell because Pepsi's far away. Um, <laughs> Pepsi's gonna act and attack. Come on, this uh, is Pepsi's moment. Prone Ooh. on the ground next to a boa constrictor, do something terrible. That's going to be a 26. Uh, all right. So now I said that Ethel didn't take any uh, cover, um, but I think this boa constrictor uh, to try and stand up on its tail and attack through here is going to. I feel like uh, the, the ghoul should have a little bit of cover from this boa constrictor. Um, so wait, because now you're outside the house. I'm outside the house. Oh, okay. Whereas I thought Ethel you were still... standing right there at the window. But I'm still going to let you attack, and I'm just going to give him uh, a little cover. But he also has a minus three to his AC, which will effectively be a minus one. Uh, and you said your total was what? For the record, a little cover in two E is plus one. Well, that's lesser cover. That's yes. Lesser cover. I just meant cover. Standard cover. Okay. Cover. Standard well, cover. Yeah. Okay, well, how much is standard cover? Let's, let's use the words two. we mean. How plus, about that? Yeah. Plus two. Plus two. Okay, two. I rolled. I think we all knew what I <laughs> When you said just a little bit. I like a little bit of cover. A little, little bit. A little cover. bit. You like the cover? You like the cover? I like a little bit of cover. I like a little bit of cover. The thing is, <laughs> this I mean, I'll move. episode is all over the place. <laughs> I'll move Pepsi first, then. Okay, does he want to slither his ass out the window? Yeah, he's slithering his little ass out the window. Okay. Sweet. And then he's attacking. Okay, well, now, well, yeah. Oh, oh, well, okay. Yeah, sorry. I, yeah, thought he was I, didn't tell you, can... I didn't tell you about the cover beforehand. Um, does Pepsi have, what kind of movement does Pepsi have? Uh, 30 feet? Yeah, 20 feet, 20 feet and cl climb 20 feet. He can slither through a window. Okay, because there's another 10 feet to slither. But I'm not going to, with semantics, I'm sure he can get there. All right, so then uh, there won't be cover. And you said, what was your roll? 26? 26. That is a hit. Okay. <laughs> Under the current circumstances. Chomp, chomp, chomp. Ooh, nice. Nine points of damage. Piercing damage. Nine points of David Hyde piercing damage. 
<laughs> He's like, not coming back for the Fraser reunion. Cutting Von Ma. He isn't. No, it's how do you not have that? Niles? Well, isn't Fraser going back to Boston or something? Isn't that like the premise? There. Oh, is he? Yeah, I think that's cool. Uh, so it's wait, are they remaking Cheers or Fraser? <laughs> I don't know. It's like a postquel. A postquel. Postquel. Let's go back to Boston. It's a um, double spinoff. It's, it's a spin back. back. Cheers. Spin back. Are you done your turn, Sydney? No. Okay, then sorry. Suki it <laughs> pulls out from her pocket a small bean. Oh. And you might be thinking, what's that? A small bean? That is it, literally exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And Suki, as if she heard you asking this in your mind, goes, yes. And then she crunches it and it turns into a fucking whip. And that's her, oh, I hit my mic. I was so bean excited. Bean whip? A bean <laughs> whip. <laughs> bean whip. Ghost ride the bean whip? <laughs> yeah, you haven't lived unless you ghost ride the bean whip. <laughs> she says, bean whip. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, uh, so he brought the bean whip. Now it's a party. <laughs> Seven layer bean whip. <laughs> Come get your scoops. It's a seven layer bean whip. Uh, <laughs> it's her verdant weapon, which I haven't used yet. Uh, wow. Which she concentrated on and she made her verdant weapon. So from uh, a second, she can just turn it into a weapon in her hand. Uh, and she's going to attack with her cool new whip. <laughs> Cool I thought whip? you were gonna. <laughs> I thought it was a bean whip. I thought you were gonna plant the bean and do something cool, and it made me think of uh, my my boys were outside today, and uh, my uh, my my youngest boy uh, Dash grabbed a little pom pom and put it on the ground, and Archer comes over and says, "Dash, you planted an imagination tree." <laughs> I was like, "That's really deep." He's so like, cute. You planted That's an imagination. So Tree. <laughs> I was like, that's such a deep way of saying wow. it. That's um, adorable. But you're, adorable. you're turning yours into a whip. <laughs> uh, that's a 25 to hit. I'm not that good with the whip. 25. You know what? With all his conditions, that would be a hit if you got a 26. Cool. <laughs> well said, Drew. That's Did you use well delivered. Oh, I'm yeah. using my guidance. <sighs> I hate you. this game. I hate this game and the way thank you play you, it. Thank you, Alda. And thank you, Atticus. Why are you shaking your head, Joe? It's good. It's great. It's great. <laughs> All right, there's a hit with the bean whip. Uh, the I bean whip bean. was a hit. Would you say you flipped the bean, bean whip? The bean whip was a big hit. Yeah. No, I flipped the bean whip. Big Best Super Bowl party ever. <laughs> you can't say flick of the bean. A little flick Damn, of this is like... My bean whip sucks. I gotta put some runes in this. <laughs> she always brings that uh, horrible bean dip. <laughs> bean whip. She's always uh, flicking her bean. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm doing with my bean whip. I'm flicking the bean. Come on, oh, it's keep Suki. Trying. Keep What's Suki? going on with this? <laughs> you look over. Going over there. <laughs> We're in the middle of a fight. You're flicking your bean whip. Yes, her <laughs> hand up her dress. Suki is again soaking wet, sopping wet. She wasn't in any water. How's that? How's that possible? She's flicking her bean whip. <laughs> what the hell is oh going my on? God. <laughs> Oh, what planted, happened tonight? We're what planting happened? imagination trees. <laughs> it was so pure, and now it's just so vile. So dirty. <laughs> the saddest part is, I thought this whip had way more damage. I have to put some runes into it or something, because that's that's a measly five points of uh, <laughs> slashy damage. Oh, it took 45 minutes. It's really not cool. Uh, oh, this isn't a cool whip at all. <laughs> it's not a cool whip at all. All right, so you, you flick your bean whip at him for five points of damage. Are, are you done? I'm gonna, I'm gonna attack again. No, you're not. You have to be out of action. You cannot have another action. That's not physically possible. You commanded. I attacked. You interacted. To then you flipped. Your bean. You took out your bean. Oh my god. You're no, gonna no, no, count? No. You, it's an interact action to make the bean turn into a weapon. I don't know if it is. Uh, Hold on. You can I spend a single interact action to cause it to immediately grow into Damn that it. weapon. I thought it was. I thought it was a free. Uh, all right. Well, it's this like, weapon's it's, so less cool than I thought. Also, it was. I think it's probably a uh, manipulate to even pull out the bean. I was gonna say that, but then I'd be like, you know, I keep my bean Joe's on the me. Asshole. I we keep my bean on. You keep your in bean ways. in hand at all times. It's on a little ring on my finger. <laughs> Genius. <laughs> ring bean. You know, I read this the other day. If you're getting something out of your backpack, it's like an action to take off your backpack. 
Yes. Yeah. And uh, then you need two two hands, I think, another action to pull it out. Yeah. Um, Were you reading wait. this about your real life or Pathfinder? <laughs> Yeah, there was a novel I was reading. <laughs> I just thought I'd discuss it here amongst my friends. My turn is over. <laughs> oh, wow. Aldo, I rest my case. Aldo, you just saw a scene to the south. Yeah, what do you do? <laughs> a lot just happened in this last a lot going. We a live goal. in a different yeah. world after that round. <laughs> what are you going to do? Uh, I want to do... I can't... God, I, mean, we, I, I, I should have done this a lot earlier, but I want to do a knowledge... Check. Did we did we ever do a knowledge check on this guy? I just assumed that he was a ghoul like the other ghouls that we faced, and so I didn't. I, I also ne- never felt like I had that extra action, but yeah. Yeah, I just like I, one of my best bombs is my blight bomb, but they have to be vulnerable. They have to they have to be able to suffer poison damage, which I assume this guy isn't. But I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, you, we haven't done a recall knowledge. Um, you could do religion here. Um, it would be a diff- more difficult check with a cult. But yeah. I would allow a cult. I actually, I wouldn't say that. I would, I would allow a cult here, and I'll tell you why if you hit it. Okay. Uh, yeah, I might as well. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna try okay. for the cult. That was a pretty good roll. Uh, that's a 35. The, right, the reason I'm gonna allow it is, it is not just a ghoul. It is a lang ghoul, um, and so you would know that from your <clears throat> occult studies. And uh, they are indeed immune to poison. Okay. Well, that's out of the way. So Aldo is once again going to throw a bottle of lightning uh, at his ACDC. And Uh, I'm crushing it. I'm crushing it tonight for some reason. You've stolen Uh, it from Atticus. I I did. I've I've siphoned, shadow siphoned off of your your Shadow siphoned by luck. Uh, 35 to hit. Yeah, that's that's a hit. And uh, oh, so close to almost a crit. crit. Yeah, with all these penalties. Oh boy. Okay, uh, that is eleven points of electricity damage. He's flat-footed, and I am now going to throw an acid flask at the fellow. Okay, and obviously, uh, if he's not taking reactions here against Aldo's ranged attacks, you probably feel pretty confident he's not holding on to any AOs. <laughs> Natural 20. Yeah. Oh, Natural just can't stop. 32. Wow. Just can't stop. <laughs> there, so, all right, so is, that is a, a named for, crit. And, and yeah. is this a ranged John or a magical We've John been using Tim's ranged system. in the past. Yeah, I, I think you're right. I think you're right. Uh, okay, this one is from uh, I'm Feng Li. In Ann Arbor, Michigan. In Ann Arbor, Michigan. Mm. Um, love Ann Arbor. Love Ann Arbor. I'm to do a Feng show Lee from Ann Arbor, Michigan. Comes in with, that's not how arrows work. Your target in an unexpected display of... Sk- that's not how bombs work. I'm so sorry. I'm so it's sorry. a fumble, wasn't it? It was. Ah. I'm so sorry. God damn. Pee pants. <laughs> Uh, so many I'm, fumbles. I'm sorry, today. I'm Fingley. It'll come back. It'll come back around one day. Uh, don't worry, Atticus will fumble enough for all of us to get you that that crit. Uh, sh- this one from John in Chicago, Illinois, nearby, nearby. Hey, John. Uh, Shades of Gormley Call. Ooh. Ooh. As you eye your target up and down, looking for the perfect shot, your face takes on an evil glint, reminiscent of a certain wild-haired witch. A shiver run down, runs down the target's spine. Double damage. And you effectively inflict evil eye. Amazing. Oh, nice. cool. Target nice. takes a minus two to one of the following. AC, ability checks, attack rolls, saving throws, or skill checks. Uh, and then make a will save. Oh, it's <laughs> for the length of the effect. Okay. So, uh, so let's go the double damage first on the acid, John. Okay. So that off the bat, that is 10 points of acid damage. Okay. And then the persistent damage will also be doubled. Oh, oh, that's with, right. On a crit, right? Okay, amazing. Awesome. Okay, and uh, then and then a will save, which would be crazy high. So let's see if you can roll a natural twenty. Um, Actually, see. it's not crazy high. Was it thirty-two, Skid? Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, well, I rolled a twenty-nine. Okay. okay. 
So that is a failure. The effect lasts 1d4 plus 1 rounds. So evil eye. So, Skid, you pick. Minus 1 to what? Uh, AC. Okay. AC, minus one AC, to, minus 2, sorry. Minus 2 to AC. Okay, yeah. so right now he has uh, an effective... Is he well? Is he still frightened three, and flat-footed, and those stacks? So he's a yeah, minus I think five. He's frightened days. two, I think. Yeah, yeah he's, he's frightened I think two. he's frightened two, and he is flat-footed again. Right, he's flat-footed. So he's an effective minus uh, six, four to his AC. Frightened two, uh, flat-footed two, and then and then two for evil eye. Two for evil eye. So he's a minus six to his AC. Good lord. Uh, they have evil eye and two E. You know, call it. I don't think they do. Um, yeah, hexes. Oh. Have you ever used a hex there, uh, Eris? Eris? Yeah, oh, um, oh, yeah, my focus spells are hexes. Um, oh, so you only get, what, three focus points a day? Do you even um, have three in your pool? I have three focus points in my pool, three spells, one cantrip. Uh, evil Eye is a witch cantrip, and it just it just makes the target frightened based on will saves. Interesting. Ooh. Yeah. Took the uh, sting out of that one. All right, well, it is um, it is my little ghoul's turn here, and he's prone, and the first thing he's going to do is try and... St- uh, actually, you know what he he does? This is what he does. is He uh, he reaches into his, uh, uh, like, a, a little scroll case sitting on his belt. You see other scroll cases where the tops have been popped off, and he goes to pull out a scroll, and I believe that... Uh, uh, interact action will provoke manipulate from, action. manipulate excuse me will provoke from Ethel get him get okay. him before he can cast the scroll dude <laughs> you see him just like <laughs> laying on the ground <laughs> fumbling I'm, at the scroll case I'm doing it with the scimitar but I think uh, you should give me some cover I should take some cover because I'm swinging down through the window he's on the ground fair same as I would have done for Pepsi come on Natural 18. I want the natural 20 oh, so bad. Oh, man. What a it still might be a crit. It's a 36. It probably 36, still is a crit. Uh, it is with a crit. all of the oh, penalties. Yeah, and he's prone. Yeah, that is a crit. Okay. Uh, let me just check. The one thing I didn't think about is the force. Okay, you'll get this scroll if he doesn't cast it, too. Oh, <laughs> yes. yeah. So attacks of opportunity are not subject to the forceful trait, I'm assuming. Right, Joe? Um, I'm not sure what that. No, I don't know. Why wouldn't First, they be? You, it's, it's, the text of it says, um, this weapon becomes more dangerous as you build momentum when you attack with it more than once on your turn. There we go. So no, it's Thank you. There you go. Okay. So this is going to be crit. Uh, 22 points of damage. Nice. 22 points of damage. And he is dead. Yes! Hey, God. That was so huge. Yes. That halo was so <laughs> huge. Oh, leans yeah, out huge. the window and just like. And we get bring, a scroll. Brings the, the scimitar down and just doesn't chop off his head. He just, you know, digs it into his head. Yes! Uh, chops off his hand and that's holding the scroll. <laughs> <in his hand. laughs> and the scroll falls limply to the ground with perhaps other things on his body as you stand in front of a portcullis that is down and no other way into this building that you can see. And we'll see you next week. Oh, ah. man. <laughs> what a fight. And no way to heal. The massive amounts of damage. <laughs> yeah, I'm not looking good. <laughs> we'll see you next time, everybody. <laughs> good day. Eat your beans. Eat your beans. Eat your beans. Eat your beans. Eat your beans, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>